is the journey um, into Venice train station. And uh, this is the body of water it crosses. As you can see, it's a pretty busy bridge, but way in the distance, a little dome, and that's uh, St. Mark's Square. Hello, and welcome to Venice. Uh, this is the train station right behind me and wanted to show you a little bit of Venice and there is what I'm looking at. Now that is the what's called the Grand Canal and again there is the train station. What you'll notice about Venice is a few things. Number one is there are no cars. No cars are allowed because <laughs> the roads are so narrow they do not allow cars. So they have gondolas and they have this Grand Canal with motorboats. Uh, so we're going to explore that a little bit later. Uh, to explore the Grand Canal, uh, you can take this Ferrovia, which is, it's called a, used to be called a Vaporetto, uh, the little steamer uh, in Italian. And uh, you can take that along the Grand Canal all the way to St. Mark's. But I think I'm going to walk. The second thing you'll notice about Venice is it's pretty crowded and it's crowded with tourists. And the third thing you're going to find about Venice that, that I found so far immediately is that uh, there are a lot of street hustlers. There's a lot of people that'll, you know, ask you to help you with your luggage or, you know, do something and they're going to ask like they're really, really earnest and they're trying to help you. They're just street hustlers and uh, the place is full of tourists. Less than 50,000 people live in the city of Venice. Venice receives up to 100,000 visitors daily, including tourists and pickpockets, so beware. In this area, are actually, you know, from this area. And so the vast majority are, uh, are tourists. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross that bridge, which is not the Rialto Bridge, and I'm gonna try to navigate my way through Venice. What I'm also gonna do is show you where my place is and I'll do more of a description tomorrow uh, but it's really just about a two minute walk and it's just right down that street right there that's where I'm staying about 125 meters away um, okay so I'm gonna cross over this bridge and so welcome to Venice I'll say more later there was a couple other things about Venice that I forgot to tell you uh, so one, you can't take cars onto the islands, is the Grand Canal, as you can see. This is the Scalzi Bridge. It is an important bridge because it connects the city to the train station. So the only way into Venice is either over this bridge or taking the Vaporetto. Scalzi Bridge literally means Bridge of the Barefoot, which refers to the barefoot monks from the nearby church, which is close to the train station. The second thing you're going to notice is, as I mentioned about no cars, if you come into the train station, uh, that's great because you can walk here. But if you drive here, you're going to have to actually, you remember that causeway I showed you earlier in the video? Um, well, that causeway, that ends and then you have to park your car. So if you drive here, <laughs> you're going to have to pay to park. So. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know, you cannot drive to Venice. You cannot even drive anywhere close to Venice. This is the train station. So one of the smartest things you can do is actually go park in a neighboring town and then take the train into Venice Santa Lucia station. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, ha, huh, this is a very confusing place with all these narrow little alleyways. How is he going to make it around this town? Well. I'm going to show you something. They're so... Because I guess the, uh, the locals have gotten so sick of answering questions. They've got signs that tell you where you should be going. This is a residential neighborhood, but where you would normally see cars parked behind the houses, you see motorboats. This is how the locals in Venice have to get around. Gondoliers in striped shirts wait by the Venetian equivalent to bus stops, ready to take tourists on a tour. Gondola rides cost a flat 80 euros for 30 minute tour during the day, 120 euros at night. Singing is extra, up to 100 euros. 
more narrow streets. Venetian masks are typically worn during the Carnival of Venice and often worn with elaborate costumes. The masks were traditionally a way to disguise social standing so that everyone could celebrate together. They come in several distinctly symbolic variations. The beaks were originally added during plague times so that the wearer could add fragrant herbs to filter out the bad air. Narrow streets in Italy were not originally designed to accommodate vehicles, so most streets in Italy are very narrow. Venice in particular, with its limited space and ban on vehicles, is notorious for its narrow alleys and lack of open spaces. Often there is barely room for two people to pass. The narrowest street in Venice is Caletta Varisco, which is only 53 centimeters or 21 inches wide. Not the place to visit if you are claustrophobic. This is the Rialto Market, and there's people hosing down the of these floors here, as you can see, I'll show you. See the guy with the power washer over there, and I think this is the Rialto Market. The Rialto Market has been around since 1097. It is the main reason the Rialto Bridge was built. Locals come here to sell and buy fresh fish and produce. I think it's just closed because it's like a farmer's market. Here's some guy here still that's uh, selling some fruits and vegetables, but it's right near the Grand Canal. And uh, it's not near the Rialto Bridge, which is kind of cool, well, kind of interesting. So I'm gonna try to find the Rialto Bridge. Hopefully I'll find it. Please subscribe, post a like, and hit the notification bell for future videos.